Well, 11, guys. It's 11. 11 what? 11 days until we get to see Rangers play again, approximately. I think it's 11 days from today. If my maths has let me down, I do apologise. But that's how long we've got to sort the problem. Well, I say the problem. I kind of mean problems. Um, look, we'll try and start with a positive. Jack Butler. There's a positive to start off with. Jack Butler's been fantastic. He's done a great job for us. He's a good shot stopper. He's kept the score down against PSV. That's kind of a negative, isn't it? I do apologise. Um, you know, he he did well against uh, Celtic yesterday on Sunday. He's done well all season. He's a confident keeper. He comes from here for crosses. How nice is it to see a keeper coming for crosses again? Um, but, OK, that's the positive. What's the negative? Well, the negative, there's too many negatives. There's so many negatives. The defence is shocking. The defence is poor. And like I've said, you know, if you play a defence with Tavernier, Goldson, Suter and Barisic, three quarters of that defence are the same defence that started against Celtic five years ago. Five years ago. In a system that relies on the fullbacks to bomb forward and bomb back with a 30 and a 31-year-old forward, who certain fullbacks who aren't getting any younger or any faster. Um, what are the problems that we got? There's no shape to the team. There's no system. Uh, the passing is slow. The build-up is ponderous. Um, there's no dynamism in attack. There's no dynamism in the midfield. There's no. There's a disconnect between attack, midfield, and field defence. There's no formation. There's no width. The strikers don't score goals. And it's just horrific. It's horrific, isn't it? I mean, I don't know why I'm laughing, but it's horrific. Now, there's been some fans that have tried to say that there's a similarity between the start of this season and the start of Poster Coglu's time at Celtic. Like Celtic. But I don't think that's at all a fair comparison, um, given the fact that, you know, even in that uh, time that Ange Postacoglu was fairly woeful, you could kind of see what he was trying to do. You could see a vision, you could see a formation, you could see a shape, you could see a set of tactics. I sit and I've watched these first 13 games, if you include pre-season, and we'll get on to why I said that in a moment, a bit later in the video. There was a point that CJ Novo made on one of his videos, a brilliant video CJ did today about Michael Beale. Um, 13 games, and I'm yet to see a shape, a formation, any width, any clue of what they're meant to be doing, any tactics, anything. They have been poor 13 games, and it's not got... From that first game against Newcastle in the pre-season to the last game against Celtic, I don't think there has been a great deal of progress made in terms of turning this team into an effective team that gets bums off seats, gets fans excited, and gets the players engaging. And I think the players are very disengaged at this moment in time tactics what tactics there are seem to be very confused um kamar roof playing on the right wing yesterday and then being used to man mark callum mcgregor the best striker in the club been used to man mark callum mcgregor well you know what next time uh, manchester city meets uh, liverpool um is uh, is uh, pep guardiola going to use erling Haaland to man mark mo salah I very or Cody Gakpo or someone like that or or you know um, or Alexis McAllister. I very much doubt that is going to be the case. Um, is Erling is I don't know is Mo Salah going to sit on Alec on on Martin Odegaard of Arsenal? I don't think so at all. So look, it was a perplexing decision. It was a strange decision. It's and. I genuinely don't see what he is trying to do with this team. As I said to you on previous videos, yeah, I have. Look, I'm not a coach in the same level as Beal, as as Rodgers, as, uh, as Guardiola, as you know, as Frank of Brentford, as Roy Hodgson of Crystal Palace. I'm not in the look. I've got an FA level one coaching certificate. I've coached at the youth level, and watching the game through a coach's eye, I don't see what we're trying to achieve with what we're trying to do on the pitch. It's really confusing for me and. Substitutions yesterday again made zero sense. Oh, yesterday, I mean Sunday, sorry, made zero sense. Um, it just seemed like, uh, I don't know, it just kind of, let's just chuck as much at it as we can and hope something happens. And it just didn't happen, did it at all? Rangers were, I said, quite frankly, appalling. Now, one of the things that is the biggest concern for, uh, for Rangers fans is Michael Beale's record in big games, in particular the old firm game. Um, so if you take Michael Beale's record against Celtic, this is his record against Celtic um, since he became Rangers manager. So at the turn of the new year, he drew 2-2 with them in the game um, Ibrox, uh, Celtic that late equaliser. We then played exceptionally poorly. He got his team selection badly wrong and we lost the Via Play Cup final 2-1. 
We then went to Parkhead, um, played just shocking, uh, lost 3-2 to them at Parkhead. Um, again, a game where, yes, the league was kind of out, out, of, out there, but there was a chance if we beat them that we could kind of breathe some life into the title race, but we didn't do it. We then played them in the Scottish Cup semi-final at Hamden. We lost 1-0 to that Diego Jota goal where Tav fell asleep at the back post. We beat them 3-0 at the end of the season in a game that had literally nothing riding on it. And then we lost them 1-0, obviously, on Sunday. That gives Michael Beale a record against Celtic of played six, won one, lost four, drawn one. That is a fairly crap record in by anyone's stretch of imagination, especially when you consider that one victory. It was in a game that had absolutely nothing riding on it. So four games. So five games. Let's take five games there where there's been something riding on it and he's got a draw out of it. And that's it. That's... That's not great, is it? That's that's a, that's a cause for concern. Now, CJ Novo on his videos earlier, I was watching CJ Novo and he made a CJ Novo is, is fantastic. I love CJ Novo and he made a great point. I'd love him on the podcast. CJ, if you're watching, come on the podcast. Um, he talked about the uh, all the games Rangers have played this season. He talked about pre-season. He talked about Europe. He talked about the League Cup. He talked about the league and he talked about how they all come together to form one big picture and how those 13 games have not really seen any move forward or progression or development for style or any tactics. And this is this is the don't worry, we are going to get to what is the solution. Um, this is the, this is how it, it stands at this moment in time. We've played 13 games this season. We've won five. We've drawn three. We've lost five. We've scored 20 and we've conceded 20. Now just. Take a look at that for a minute. Let those statistics sink in for a moment. Five victories, five defeats. That's a 50% win ratio in terms of that. It's actually less than 50% win ratio if you take it across the 13 games. Is that acceptable for a Rangers team? If you're prepared to accept that, then look, are we quite happy to finish second? Are we quite happy for Scotland to become Germany? where Celtic are Bayern Munich and we're Borussia Dortmund, where we occasionally will win a title, but they will dominate for the rest of time in memorial. And that's what could happen. Financially, at the moment, they are Bayern Munich to our Borussia Dortmund. They do seem to have a lot of money. And as Chris Boyd so brilliantly put on Sunday, you know, we handed them 20 million by going out of the Champions League. And as he said, these people who are coming out with the fact is, oh, we're quite happy to be in the, in the Europa League. You're talking drivel, as, as Chris Boyd said, absolute drivel. Um, Scoring 20, conceded 20, zero goal difference. Is that positive? Is that the sign of a team that is heading in the right direction? Doesn't look like it on paper, does it? Certainly does not. Now, what is the solution to these problems? What do we need to do to solve the issues that we quite clearly are facing at this moment in time? Look, it's difficult because I'm not Michael Beale. I'm not Neil Banfield. I'm not Harry Watling. I'm not... I've not got any influence over this team. And you may say, thank God for that. I mean, you haven't got any influence over this team because you talk crap every week. But at the end of the day, we need to come up with a solution. And like I said at the start of the video, it's 11 days. We've got 11 days to do something. Now, I was looking on social media today, and I know social media is not always the best judge of how people are actually rationally thinking because it's a place where people sound off irrationally a lot of the time and talk a lot of crap. And I'm just as guilty as anybody of doing that. Now, overwhelmingly, though, overwhelmingly, I would say over 90 percent of the posts that I read on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, um, on Instagram, on threads, um, watched on TikTok. Nine, over 90 percent of those posts are anti Michael Beale, want to see Beale gone. Now, even in a time where a team's not doing great, you would expect a greater percentage to be sticking up for him um, after such a short period of a season, only 13 games, you know, four games, four league games, 13 games in total, including pre-season. But it just isn't there. And you look at the atmosphere at the end of the game yesterday, it was toxic, absolutely toxic. Like, and it's difficult, isn't it, to come back from that. Very few managers will ever re-emerge from that toxic shroud. So how do we solve this issue? How do we sort the problem? And what do we do? Now, for me, and this is just brainstorming ideas, there's a few things that we need to happen over this 11 days of, of work that we have now to put in with the squad, 11 days to, to put right the wrongs of the first half of the first part of the season, to, to put this team in a place that when it comes out to play St Johnston, and yes, I know it's only St Johnston, but 
puts this team back in the right place. We've got, you know, an, uh, we've got a, a great number of games in such a short period of time. I think it's five games in 14 days with the Betis, obviously, first Europa League game coming up as well. I think we've got Aberdeen um, in there as well. And um, I think it is also we have got yeah, Motherwell as well, who are doing quite well at the moment. Now, for me, this squad is kind of in a difficult place. It's not performing as it is. We need to put in a, in a formation that, for me plays to its strength, that puts it in the best possible way to actually succeed on the field. For me, this formation, with the fact we don't have any natural wingers, and Matondo has done okay, but he's still not the answer. We need a, a formation that caters for what we've got. And for me, it's crying out to play three at the back. Um, three, four, one, two. Now, how would that look? What would that look like on the field? Well, obviously, you've got the in goal. Your back three, you would look with... Um, I mean, Goldson as right side centre back. Look, I know he was fairly dreadful, but he isn't going to get dropped, guys. He's not. If he's fit, he's going to play. And look, I know, like I said, with social media, I know what's been said. Michael Beale is not going to get sacked. They're not going to sack him. They're just not going to do it. They've backed him. They're not going to sack him after such a short period of time. As much as we may want that, or you may want that, or, or the vast majority of fans may want that. I don't think it's going to happen. So he's going to have his, he has his favourites. We know he has his favourites. We know those players like Goldson, like Tav, no matter how bad they actually are, are never ever going to get dropped. So we've got to face facts. So we've got to try and sort the problem with what we've got at this moment in time. Whether that's going to be good enough, I don't know, but I'm going to suggest some solutions. So back three, we go with Goldson, Suter in the middle because Suter is very good at them when he's on the right side of defence, when he's on the left side of defence he seems to really struggle, he seems to misjudge the flight of the ball, he seems to uh, just misjudge his position on the field, um, unconfident using his left foot, so for me you go with Suter in the middle, I think he's very good at stepping out, bringing the ball out, his passing's good, so I think he plays on that side there in the middle of that three. On the left side, you then use Leon Balogun or Ben Davis. I know Ben Davis is not great, but he's a left footer at least. That'll be the back three. It also then takes off the fullbacks. It gives the fullbacks a little bit less to defend, a little bit less defensive duties to do. So the wing backs, he's going to use you're going to use wing backs. You're going to use people who you know get up and back, and that's Borna and James Tavernier. I know they're not great, but what else have we got? He's not going to play Sterling because he isn't going to drop Tav. Ridvan, I suppose, is an alternative if fit, so Ridvan could play left wing back. We have the wing backs. We then have two midfielders in between, and that would be Jack and Raskin, or Run Lundstrom and Raskin, or Raskin and Cifuentes, depending on the game. Raskin, I think, Raskin has had some good games, and he's had some dreadful games. And what's been really worrying for me at the start of this season is Nicholas Raskin, and Todd Cantwell, who were two of our best players coming into the end of last season, have not done well at all this season. They've lacked. Raskin's had a couple of good games, like I said. Cantwell's had a couple of good games. But he was poor, very poor against Celtic. You know, and I think that was more with how he was used rather than, than his actual quality of his play. I think Raskin needs to be used in the correct position. He needs to be used, given a little bit more freedom to move forward, not kind of given that sort of um, defensive duties that he was given. I think he needs a bit more ability to, to pass the ball forward. He needs more options to pass the ball forward. That's another thing you look at it yesterday, uh, sorry, Sunday. You have a situation where constantly there is nobody, there's no movement up there for them to pass the ball to. So the ball turns around and goes back. And it kills the impetus in the attack. It's constantly the issue. We need to give Raskin those forward options to play it forward to. You then put Todd Campbell in the 10 spot in the hole, give him the freedom to go where he wants, influence the game where he wants. Let him play as he did at the end of last season and let's see if he can get back to the form of last season. You go with two up top. For me, you've got to play Danio. The Danio, he cost six million, allegedly, although Michael Bills is, uh, yeah, keeps denying that he did you've got to give him the opportunity to play. We've got to see what we've got in this man. And to me, Cart Horse Dessers is just not, he's just not the answer. He's looked woeful since he's come into the club. Look, I know I wrote him off at the start and I've really wanted to be proved wrong by him. And he's just shocking. He's just poor. He's just second rate. He's not even, he's a championship player. I mean, and I'm talking an English championship at very best kind of thing. 
And even then, I think he'd struggle. I, I, trust you, I think he's struggling in this championship, if I'm being brutally honest about it. Um, so he's got to play up front, and Roof has got to play up front. Roof is our best natural finisher. If we keep him fit, we play him up front with De Neo. De Neo can drop off. He can go out wide, but from that central position, not play him out wide, as Michael Beale did when he brought him on yesterday. Put those two up top. So to go three, four, one, two. I think that would better cater for that system. It would give us a bit of width, a bit more solidity. I mean, give us a bit more solidity to defend. You could drop back and defend, you know, as a six, even, uh, you know, with, with, whoever, with Jack or Lundstrom, whoever, whoever's that descent defense, you could drop him back in front of the back three and the wing backs dropping in. It gives that a bit more defensive solidity there. It also gives you freedom to get forward as well. So, you know, you've got perhaps, you know, seven to go forward whilst the three hold back. It gives you just more options for me. So that's how I would do it. The other thing, like I said, is trying to get these two, the best two players on this squad, to find their form, to give them their confidence back. They look to be severely lacking with confidence at this moment in time. I don't know what Michael Beale has done to them this season, but they certainly don't seem to be the same players they were last season. Finally, what else? We need to play with a bit more speed, a bit more positive movement forward if you play slowly it gives the team opposition team time to reset it makes you predictable if you have a bit more speed about yourself and if we're playing this system of 3412 it gives us width it gives us central ability as well raskin and campbell in behind the front two moving around putting little balls through so we can play centrally or we can play wide it gives the opposition more of a confusion as to what they cover how they cover where they play so that's kind of a solution that I've been trying to work on. And it's not a great one, I know. And like I said, I'm no tactical master genius coach. You know what? If I was, would I be doing this? No, I'd be coaching someone in the Premier League or in the Scottish Premier League or in the English Championship or in La Liga, wouldn't I? Well, not that I can speak Spanish, but I'm just saying as an example. But look, we've got to try and change something because what we're doing at the moment isn't working. Albert Einstein once said the definition of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And what Rangers are doing at the moment is just plain stupid. They're doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result and it isn't working. So we need to try something different. We need to innovate. We need to do something to play with a bit more aggression, a bit more passion, a bit more forward movement. I have not seen any passion, any aggression from this team at all this season so far. We need to see it once we come back from the international break. And like I said, Look, no matter how much we may want it or you may want it, and I've never come out yet and said whether I want him sacked or not, he, we, he's not going to be sacked. He is not going to be sacked. They're not going to sack him. That, that's just a plain fact at this stage. So, look, we're trying to come up with a solution, work with what we've got. Probability is that maybe the League Cup is the best we get this season, which is not good enough for a team like Rangers. And like I said, I don't want this to become Germany, where one team dominates and everyone else occasionally might get a look in, you know, the Leipzigs and other Borussia Dortmunds. And this is the danger at the moment in Scotland. They are moving so far financially ahead like Munich have done in Germany. And we are trailing them at this moment in time. Um, had a good point on the Rabble podcast earlier where Cora said, you know, they've spent 17 million on centre-backs. What have we spent? 3 million on Goldson and, uh, you know, hardly anything in the last five years on centre-backs. So, look, at the end of the day, we do need to try and innovate something, to change something, to make it better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Guys, just a heads up to what's coming up this week. Tonight on the podcast at half past seven, we've got a live podcast with Scott McKay from Inside Ibrox. Um, the a fantastic writer, writes about, about Rangers on the thing. He's going to be coming on the podcast tonight. And then on Thursday at seven o'clock UK time, we've got a very special guest indeed. We've got David Edgar from Heart and Hand coming on to the podcast with myself and Victoria. That's Thursday at seven. So come and join us for those two live live podcast get your thoughts questions opinions in to scott and david thank you so much for watching glasgow rangers nation guys if you like the content please hit that sub guys we had a fantastic response to yesterday's video please let's have the same fantastic response and let's have a great uh, increase in the subs and also ring the notification bell so you never miss out and as always there's two things i need you to do number one hit the like and number two remember we are the <laughs>